I'm Zoe De La Hunty Light, and I've played a lot of Raven's Watch over the last week or so. Raven's Watch is a top-down roguelike that has you getting as powerful as you can in each run, with the eventual target of taking on the Nightmare Final Boss, with an emphasis on stacking up on runs with different dark fairy tale characters, goals, and likelihood of actually defeating said boss. It's kind of like Hades, but with fairy tales, so naturally, Raven's Watch sounded right up my alley. It can be played in co op, but I was going at it solo while maining the Snow Queen, and having said all of that, here's my review of Raven's Watch and six things I liked about it. Raven's Watch has a day and night cycle which isn't just there to make the world feel more immersive. During night and day, the abilities of your chosen hero subtly change. For example, the path left by the Snow Queen's ice skating will persist during the night instead of disappearing entirely during the day, which ends up slowing down enemies who wander through it. The enemies also have different qualities depending on the time of day, with the poor sign enemies exploding in the daylight and providing some very satisfying chain reactions. This might seem like a small thing, but it does keep the 20 minute bouts of gameplay fresh, which I appreciate, as you do have to be flexible with your approach to Raven's Watch depending on the time of day. I found myself focusing a lot more on combat during the day, as those exploding pigs make the whole killing thing a lot quicker, which powers me up quicker, so it's a benefit to everyone involved, except for the exploding pigs. Speaking of, during each run you can power up to a maximum of five levels, and each level you reach lets you pick a new ability. Should you eventually reach level five in a single run, which takes some time, you gain access to your ultimate ability, which is a must for the final boss. As time goes on, you get better and better, meaning you get to level 5 quicker and quicker, building you up nicely to finally take on the Nightmare Boss, which you will definitely need all that power for. Come the end of every run, you get a number of points based on how well you did, which will then get added to your character's rank. New rank equals new powers for you to use in each run. Now, you're not very well equipped to take on the boss right away, so at first, Raven's Watch gently nudges you towards focusing on ranking up your character and honing your skills. Again, a lot like Hades. I savoured this gameplay loop, as I found it took some of the pressure off of me to defeat the boss until I could reliably get to level 5. In a weird way, it kept my expectations low, which in turn made my targets for each run realistic. It's almost like I'm at therapy. Like Hunt Showdown, Raven's Watch encourages you to decide what you want to do in each run. In some games you focus on ranking up, some you explore, and some you just fight to find the best combination of buffs, AoE attacks, and damage. These Raven statues direct you to specific activities on the map too, so you're not going to be wandering around aimlessly and wasting time when you have so precious of it to do what you want which impatient, efficient me likes a lot. Don't get me wrong, although there's a lot of death, Raven's Watch's runs aren't all about killing things. Raven's Watch wholeheartedly wants you to have the freedom to do almost whatever you want in each run, whether that's taking on the boss or ranking up your character, and oh my god does it succeed. Plenty of activities are at your disposal, like a messed up porcine slash ghost slash tentacle buffet, such as challenge grimoires, stacking up magic items, getting enough dream shards to buy the Sandman's wares, mini dungeons, boss fights, and even quests. The quests and their NPCs are simple, but they kind of have to be to fit in the 20 minutes, and I really don't care, as they really do work with Raven's Watch's gameplay loop. These quests are all about helping one of three pigs build a house out of either straw, wood, or stone. Just like the fairy tale, except instead of a wolf coming at the end, it's waves upon waves of ghosts, exploding pigs, and all teeth imp 
things. Tailoring each run to what you want to accomplish, or at least aim to accomplish as we're realists here, you can focus on any of these activities or, if you think you're ready, you can go all in and destroy one of the nightmare tumor mini bosses on the map. Succeed, and the final boss loses 20% of its health. Tumors are what their legitimately in-law name is, I'm not just saying that to describe them, otherwise that would be a bit too visceral, but the idea is that these tumors are manifestations of the final boss. Once you defeat the main tumor, you then have to defeat waves upon waves of enemies, which means that not only do you truly feel like you've earned that 20% of the boss's health being gone, but it's also really good to train you up for the rest of the run. So all in all, it's very well designed. Okay, speaking of the boss, God, it is hard. When you get to the nightmare boss at the zenith of each run, Raven's Watch turns into a Hades-esque bullet hell that reminds me of Lurney, which is good because it's not the same combat you'd be doing for the past 20 minutes, but bad because it kicked my ass at first. As I mentioned earlier, I was playing Raven's Watch solo when I had advanced access to the game, and let me tell you that the final boss is really hard on your own. Defeating it is challenging, yet the point isn't to defeat it straight off in Raven's Watch. It is something you have to work up to, and the sense of achievement when you do it all alone for the first time is exquisite. Raven's Watch takes a leaf out of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice book, which is actually a feather from a raven. The way it works is you start off with four feathers, which are used to respawn you when you die. 30 seconds, a surprisingly long time, tick by while you lie dead in the dirt, and at any time during that half minute you can respawn, but the longer you wait, the enemies gradually think you're really dead for good and start to wander off. So, if you want, you can respawn and try to kind of sneak away. I'm a big fan of this, as it means that when you or I get into a fight that we weren't quite ready for, we can die, oops, and then just sneak off when we realize we bit off more than we can chew. You can also choose where you respawn. So if you ended up dying at the edge of a big group of enemies while you were waiting for your AOE attack to charge up, you can actually respawn in the middle of them with all of your abilities intact and let rip with damage. One of the biggest endearing points about Raven's Watch is that all of the characters are fun to play, inventive, and well-balanced. You've got the Snow Queen, Beowulf, Scarlet the Red Hood, and the Pied Piper, the last of which is an unexpected addition, but quite possibly my favorite. The notes coming out of his flute deal damage like an ear-pleasing machine gun with added rats. Scarlet turns into a huge wolf at night, again, day-night cycle is important, and has completely different abilities from her daytime self. Beowulf is fine with his dragon, but he wasn't my favorite. As you've seen for most of this video, the Snow Queen is by far my preferred character. Her combination of slowing frost effects, the ability to shatter chilled enemies, and the way her abilities complement each other effortlessly means she's a fantastic choice for new players, but has enough complexity to reward those who stick with her to level 5, like I did. This cast of characters is endless encouragement to try out a new hero without a massive time commitment, or alternately on your Steam Deck during a train ride or something, you can just put some points in towards ranking up your main. Raven's Watch is the ideal Steam Deck game, and that's the main platform on which I played it. Getting it to run does require shifting to Proton Experimental, just to let you know if you're also a Steam Deck zealot like yours truly. The big thing I'm also going to put here is that Raven's Watch is currently in early access. More characters, levels, and enemies are going to be added in the future. However, right now, there's definitely enough to play, providing a very solid basis for those of you who are suckers for a just one more type of game like I am. And there you go, that's what I thought of Raven's Watch. 
Are you going to give it a go? Or if you've already played Raven's Watch, what do you think about it? Which character are you maining? And am I wrong about Beowulf? Let me know in the comments below. I'm thoroughly into the Snow Queen at the moment, but I should really give the Pied Piper another go, as I do love having minions, especially if those minions are tiny bloodthirsty mammals. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching, and make sure you subscribe to Eurogamer and like this video for more videos from yours truly, Zoe Della Hunty Light, as we have a new video out almost every single day. Now, I'm going to go and try to master the Pied Piper, seeing as I've already dedicated a lot of time to the Snow Queen, so I'll see you lot next time.